the VC equals delta VE over RE times RC. I just replaced IC with what IE equals. Okay, so what I can do, I'm just going to move this RE over here. And here you can see something interesting. Uh, a change in VE is approximately the change in VB. So I'm going to go ahead and replace this VE, delta VE, with a delta VB. So if I consider this VC to sort of be my output, and I consider this VB to kind of be my input, a small change in VB is multiplied by RC over RE, and that's what the change in VC is. In essence, that's what an amplifier is. Because I can make RC to be 10, or make RC to be 10 times RE, and then I have a multiplicative factor of 10 times whatever I wiggle my input by, and that's what shows up at the output. This is an amplifier. So you can see how we can get an amplification at the output based on a wiggle at the input. But for all this to be true, this setup kind of has to have started at the right place. That means it has to start at a place where VBE is going to be roughly the same. We have to start at a place where all these equations actually hold true. And that's only true for one mode of operation for the transistor, the mode of operation we call the forward active region. So in order to set that up, we have to sort of start off these initial conditions in a place where the transistor is kind of happy in its forward active region and wiggling these things is going to cause everything I described to happen. Starting this transistor off in the right place is what we call um, biasing the transistor. So what we want to do is we want to set up IE to be about 100 microamps. Uh, we, s we chose uh, RE to be uh, 3.3 kilo ohms, and we chose RC to be 22 kilo ohms. These two resistors give us about a factor of 8 amplification here, um, and this IE uh, will define what we want VE to be. So using a multimeter, we can just measure VE, which means we want VE to be about to be exactly 0.33 volts. So to get it there, what we do is we put a potentiometer at the base. This is a way we can model a potentiometer. It's just two resistors. And by tuning the potentiometer, you trade off this resistance on either side of, uh, of the base. And this is going to kind of set this VB and we just kind of tune it, measuring this VE until it's, ex it's about 0.33 volts, and the transistor is biased in the right place. That means we'll start off in a place where all this is happy, and then we'll just set up the buzzer right here. And the buzzer is going to create that delta V, the delta VB here, which then is going to get followed by the emitter and create everything that I described and we'll get an amplified voltage at the output. So, there's actually one more trick we used in order to be able to get a higher gain at the frequencies that we're interested in. Uh, in electrical engineering, we deal a lot with things in the frequency domain. Uh, sound, which we're trying to measure here, is somewhere between 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz. And then we can take advantage of that in order to get a higher gain than we do at DC. We have components that are frequency dependent, the most important of which, or one of the, the most notable in this case, is a capacitor. A capacitor is going to act at high frequencies like a short, just like a wire. And a capacitor is going to act at low frequencies like an open circuit. So here's what we did. 
instead of just having this resistor, we put a capacitor and another resistor in series with each other and in parallel with this original RE that we had. Now what does that do? Well, let's see. At low frequencies, which is at DC, this capacitor acts like an open circuit, which means this is not electrically collected at all. Current cannot flow this way. So we can just ignore this part of the circuit, and we have what we had before. We have this equation here. At high frequencies, in the frequencies that we're interested in, where this VBE, uh, this VB is being changed by the buzzer at sound frequencies, this capacitor looks like a short. So it looks look just like a wire. Which means that, let's call this resistor RM, that at high frequencies, the effective resistance of these two together is just these two resistors in parallel. So we're going to have the same equation we had before, delta VC, say, equals delta VB times RC over RE in parallel with RM. Now, you may or may not know this, but two resistors in parallel, uh, the effective resistance of two resistors in parallel is going to be less than the resistance of just one of them. So this effective resistance is actually less than the original RE, which means that RC divided by something smaller than it used to be before is actually a higher gain. So at the frequencies that we're interested, these high frequencies where sound is, the gain of our amplifier with the capacitor in here is actually higher than it is at DC where our signal isn't. And that's what our amplifier looks like. This is exactly the circuit that is sitting on our sound meter. Learn something? So this is what the code on the NerdKid actually does. Uh, the NerdKit uh, uses the ADC, just like the temperature sensor does, to take the output from that amplifier we built. The ADC just kind of samples as fast as it can and takes that sound signal and then just chops it up, taking about 200 samples at a time. And then it measures the highest value that it sees and the lowest value that it sees over that time window and takes the difference between those two to kind of represent the volume over that time window. And then we just take the logarithm of that value and represent that onto the LED marquee. We chose a log because a log allows us to show small signals and really large signals kind of on the same scale. So a small signal is just a couple of bars and a really large signal uh, would in our case fill up the entire LED marquee. For more information about our kits, or more videos like this one, please visit us at www.nerdkits.com. I apologize for all the extra thinking required to watch this video. So as a treat, here are some more clips from Battle of the Bands at MIT. Next up we've got Umberto Evans. Now Umberto is, uh, is a good friend of mine actually. He's the uh, co-founder of a company called NerdKids, which started at MIT. They sell microcontroller kits for you. Uh, anybody can buy one, anybody can use one, and the idea is it's, it, they're, they're easy to learn and easy to use. In fact, if you look to your left, right, or I guess to your right, to my left, there's a sound meter on the wall. They built that. It's pretty sweet. So let's give it up for Umberto Evans and NerdKids. <laughs> 